Howdy folks, my name is Richard Procopio for Massively.com. Last week I got to go down to Maryland and visit with the good folks at ZeniMax Online Studios to see the Elder Scrolls Online in action. I got a hands-on uh, time with the game, I got to play for about four hours, but I also got to witness some presentations from the dev team, I got to watch some live uh, demonstrations of areas of the game I didn't get to actually play, and I actually got to sit in on an open forum QA session. So I'm going to highlight the major takeaways from these presentations and such. So ZeniMax's philosophy in regards to the game is that they want Elder Scrolls Online to be, number one, a best-in-class role-playing game, number two, a great Elder Scrolls game in its own right, number three, an engaging social experience, and number four, a premium service. In conjunction with their core philosophy, they have four pillars they are using to guide their design decisions. World immersion, strategic and real-time combat, unique progression, and a modern social experience. So what does that mean exactly and how they're going to accomplish that? Well, here's some of the goals that they actually tied to the pillars. They said that they wanted to have an immersive story that has lore continuity with the previous Elder Scroll games. They want to have familiar combat controls, but also remove rotation-based combat and offer a variety of gameplay options. They also want exploration-based content, tasks that can be solved a variety of different ways, and have choices that matter. So one of the live demonstrations that we watched was a dungeon run. And at launch, there's going to be a 1-4 player dungeon in each of the 16 zones in Elder Scrolls Online. So that means they're launching with 16 different instance dungeons for groups of four players. So most of these dungeons will also have a second version of them geared towards challenging max level characters. So you're talking close to 30 or something independent dungeon experiences. We watched the devs take on some encounters from a level 15 dungeon called Spindle Clutch. The first time you run through the dungeon, it's story driven. And the story for this uh, particular dungeon was a group of adventurers were exploring the spider caves and half of them went mad and the other half barely made it back to the entrance of the dungeon. And so you're investigating what happened. So they wanted to show us uh, in Elder Scrolls Online how the enemies use synergies and tactics to make things difficult for you and your party members. Enemies are going to behave differently depending on who their allies are and how, how your group is actually approaching the fight. So we saw this fight against a fire mage and a foot soldier. And the foot soldier immediately ran up to us and started attacking us. But then he threw down a patch of this sticky tar under, our, uh, under the dev's feet. And it was funny, he actually emoted, he actually said, uh, he shouted, light it up! And the fire mage then actually cast a fire spell on the tar and turned it into like a, a big inferno. So alone, these enemies wouldn't be able to perform that attack. So it's interesting to see dynamics like that emerge when there's multiple. Another example was a forest guardian creature called a Spriggan, who looks around for forest creatures and then actually kind of like mind controls them, buffs them, and then uses those creatures to attack you. So the enemies aren't the only ones that actually have group synergies. You can do this as well. Some of your abilities can trigger synergies if members of your group are watching out for them. So we got to witness one of the developers do an ultimate ability called a Nova. And this spell is powerful in its own right. But if an ally runs to the center of the Nova and interacts with it quickly, they can turn it into a supernova, which does extra damage and stuns foes around it. After the dungeon demonstration, creative director Paul Sage spoke to us about how character progression would work. In Elder Scrolls Online, combat is similar to the single-player Elder Scrolls game. You tap left to swing your sword or fire your weapon that's in your hand. You hold left click to charge up a heavy attack. Holding right click is a block. But in Elder Scrolls Online, you can also dodge by double trapping in a direction, and there's an action bar for slotting in skills. So you'll actually have five slots on your hotbar to put active abilities in. There's also one quick slot for a consumable like a potion, and a slot for an ultimate ability. When you move up a level, you get to select whether you want to improve your health, magicka, or stamina. These resources will be familiar with anyone who played the single-player Elder Scrolls games. There are no cooldowns on any abilities in Elder Scrolls Online, but they all drain a resource. So, for example, magical abilities will require magicka to cast, martial abilities or sprinting or using stealth require stamina. The good news is you'll always be able to respect the way you distribute these points so you don't have to feel locked into one particular build or whatnot. How to do that, we don't really know yet, but they did say you can redistribute these points at some point. You also get to select a skill when you gain a level. At the start of the game, you can select abilities from one of three different skill lines. Class, weapon, and armor. And each of these skill lines has subsections. For example, I played a sorcerer, and in my class skill line, I could acquire skills in dark magic, Daedric Summoning, or Storm Calling Trees. 
Each tree has active and passive abilities you can spend points on. Uh, in the weapon skill line, you can spend points in two-handed, hand and shield, dual wield, bow, destruction staff, and restoration staff. And in the armor skill line, you can have skills in light armor, medium, and heavy. So an active skill could be placed in one of the five spots in your action bar. And over time, you're going to accrue many abilities and have to choose which ones you're going to have active at any given time. While we only started out with three skill lines, you're going to be able to unlock around 15 different skill lines when Elder Scroll Online launches. Some of the other skill lines they mentioned were World, which includes a vampire tree for players who are savvy enough to discover how to unlock it. Guild, which allows you to get new abilities for joining the mages and or fighters guild. They did mention that they're working on a thief and assassins guild, but it's probably not going to be in for launch. They also mentioned a skill line for alliance versus alliance and race. Once you spend a point in a skill tree, that decision is permanent. So I actually told some of the developers that I felt hesitant to spend any points in a weapon tree because what if I find a better weapon with, of a different type later on? So they said that while the skill decision is permanent, there are enough skill points in the game to unlock all of the skills. In addition to getting a point when you level up, you can also search the world for sky shards and every three sky shards you locate will grant you another skill point. So after you hit max level, your progression doesn't stop there. A dedicated level 50 player can have all of the skills at their disposal and make a large variety of different builds. This is also why the idea of class in Elder Scrolls Online is de-emphasized, because class only accounts for one of the skill trees where you can pick abilities from. Once you select an active skill, using that skill will rank it up. Once you hit rank 4 in an active skill, you get a morph choice. Now this choice will change how the ability works. Maybe you can choose to make like some sort of damage spell into an AoE, an area of effect spell. Or maybe it'll do a, a, a less initial damage and do more damage over time. Your morph choices on these active skills can be respect. So this is not a permanent choice. Overall, I really enjoyed the approach to character progression and customization. I like how your choice of class doesn't lock you into using only certain weapons and armor types. I mean, my sorcerer ran around at times with a mix of medium and heavy armor and chopped enemies down with a huge greatsword after I lightning bolted them. I also like how there's progression after you hit max level in the form of acquiring all the skills in the game. Finesse is another feature that the developers spoke about. Finesse is a way for players to get players to actually pay attention to what they're doing in game. If you're playing the game well by dodging, blocking, interrupting, and countering attacks, you're going to be rewarded with extra experience and extra loot from Finesse. There's actually like a little F that appears next to it so you know that you're getting rewarded for Finesse. If you just swing your sword mindlessly to kill your foes, you won't get any Finesse rewards. Now, if you're particularly deft, you can also get the classic Elder Scrolls slow motion cam shot that everyone likes to see. Finesse seemed a bit difficult to pull off at low levels, monsters died very quickly, and without a large range of skills, it wasn't easy to do. And also, during my PlayStation, I was grouped up with another player, which made the monsters die even faster. But the devs assured us that Finesse would be a bigger factor later on, and especially when working with groups. I'm going to wrap up this video with some rapid fire facts we learned during the open forum QA session. There will be mounts in the game, but they aren't ready to talk about them yet. There's no player housing currently planned. And destruction and restoration schools of magic are fully implemented with the other schools like conjuration, abjuration that you're familiar with making an appearance in the game in some form. Eliminating the holy trinity of tanking DPS and healing is not one of their goals. They don't discourage it, but it's not necessarily required either. Some classes have tanking abilities, but they're not expected to grab aggro and everything all the time. And healing spells are AoE or conal effects. You don't target allies and heal them. Some skills may actually cause guards to attack you. We speculated that maybe like the vampire skill line would do this, but they wanted players to discover what this was all about on their own. They will support the Mac OS at launch. Racial crafting styles exist, and you'll be able to learn the crafting patterns of other cultures. They wanted you to be able to import your friends from Facebook and make them contacts in game, but Facebook changed their rules and they can't do that now. They will have the ability to share achievements and screenshots on social media sites. There's no dying system currently planned for launch. There's no official controller support, but it does work and does play really well with free software programs out there. They will have full add-on support. Uh, Lua uh, add-on support will be in the game. 
And disguises are found as drops off enemies and can be put into a costume disguise slot. Uh, they are used to avoid combat with enemies of a particular type and can be used for role playing as well. I actually encountered this uh, through my questing. I was able to put on some like piratey type uh, outfit and I could walk past a lot of the people that otherwise would attack me. So that was pretty cool. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my hands-on preview of The Elder Scrolls Online. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment in the comments field below. And don't forget to check out my coverage on Massively.com. There is a hands-on impressions article and an interview article with Paul Sage. See you next time. Thanks.